Today we're gonna talk about some of the major news in the industry this week. This includes new software releases, Nvidia's new Omniverse Cloud, new AMD upscaling technologies, game development news, and much more. Autodesk has unveiled the features and improvements of Maya 2023, the upcoming update of the software. This version is promising an easy force experience for beginners and usability for both seasoned and new users alike. This version also has an overall improvement for user experience. It will add a new application home hub, interactive tutorials, and search which will make it more convenient, especially when looking for menus, tools, commands, and scene objects simply by typing them into the text field. Furthermore, there is a new sweep mesh option which will let you choose whether to use a single creator or multiple creator nodes per curve. Additionally, the Boolean operations have been improved for a more robust Boolean modeling workflow by introducing a new Boolean node, in addition to a new Boolean stack, which will make working with Boolean operations a lot more easier. The update also includes a long list of new smaller features, in addition to updates and performance improvements such as the USD plugin update, introducing Blue Pencil for 2D drawing and animation, also a VR mode that will allow you to use Maya in VR plus other features and updates as well. Never Center has announced the release of Silo 2021.5, the latest version of its lightweight polygonal modeling and UV mapping tool. This version introduced a lot of features such as the ability to import SVG files, and this should make it easier when converting intricate shapes to geometry. Also support improvements for all formats, including fixing issues with non-English characters and file paths. There is also support for normal vectors that has been improved upon, and auto tessellation of faces with holes for a format that does not support face holes, in addition to improved handling of instances and a long list of bug fixes. K-Studio announced the release of Fusion, a new modeling plugin for 3ds Max. Fusion is a parametric modeling tool for repetitive geometries with any level of complexity. With a simple interface, Fusion promises the ability to effortlessly create in addition to modifying objects such as stucco moldings, fences, bridges, and so on. And its core Fusion is a spline cloning tool with several advanced options that allow you to control how geometry is repeated, deformed, and fused. In another 3D Max news, there is this remash modifier from Polydesign. They released VDB Remash, a new C++-based multi-threaded OpenVDB remeshing tool. It includes a procedural filter stack that has 10 filters and can be applied in any order. According to the developers, since it is a volume-based modifier, it works quite differently from the traditional surface modifiers, and it has many uses. It can be used to smooth the edges on hard surface models, post-processing 3D scans for removing unwanted holes, and it can generate smooth high-poly models from low-poly and much more. Insidium released a sneak peek at Tayo, a new procedural plant modeling and animation plugin for Cinema 4D. The software includes three modules, to plant, which allows you to create any plant from shrubs and flowers to big fruit trees in no time. The other one is to tree, which enables you to fill volumes with non-interesting branches and leaves, and finally to grass, which allows you to generate and distribute grass on any object or surface. The plugin also has a multi-instance support, which helps you to keep the viewport fast. On the 22nd of March, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang announced in his keynote at GTC 2022 the Omniverse Cloud, a suite of cloud services that promises instant access to the Omniverse platform. This includes Nucleus Cloud, which allows artists to access and edit large 3D scenes from anywhere. It also includes Omniverse Create, which is an app for technical designers and enables artists to build 3D worlds in real time interactively. Furthermore, there is View, which is made for non technical users, and it is needed to view Omniverse scenes by streaming full simulation rendering capabilities using the NVIDIA GeForce Now platform powered by NVIDIA GPUs in the cloud. Just recently, AMD showed up the next generation with their Fidelity FX super resolution upscaling technology. This promises to increase image quality that rivals NVIDIA's DLSS, and it works on any GPU, whether it be AMD or NVIDIA's. Also what AMD is promising here is that the technology does not require dedicated machine learning hardware and it is due to arrive in Q2 of this year. It will also bring with it further improvements and new support for devices such as Xbox. As part of its GDC keynote, AMD released a list of both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs 
where FSR2 is expected to run and it recommends using it on RX 590, RX 6500 XT or higher and for Nvidia cards it recommends using GTX 1070 or higher. On separate news, Adobe announced that starting from the 27th of April 2022, prices for some creative cloud plans will increase in selected countries. This is the second time that Adobe raised its prices since the creative cloud was introduced back in 2012, and this is the first price increase to affect users outside of the US. The prices will vary by plan of course, but for individual users, the only subscription affected is the all apps plans, both monthly and annual. The teams and enterprise plans will also see an increase as well. In gaming news, Unity released Enemies, the latest project by the company's demo team, as it has been custom for many years now that Unity would showcase the engine improvements and features through demo projects and short films such as Adam, Book of the Dead, and The Heretic. Enemies showcases the power and capabilities of the Unity platform for creating high-end photorealistic visuals using their improved high-definition render pipeline which now supports Nvidia's deep learning super sampling and it also expands on the work done before on the Heretic, which featured Unity's first realistic digital human. The improvement includes realistic eyes, new skin shader, GPU skin attachment system, strand-based real-time hair solution, and overall a better 4D pipeline. After the announcement of the new Witcher game, there is currently in development and directed by Jason Slama, who was the UI programmer on The Witcher 3, CD Projekt Red and Slama specifically commented that there will be no crunch during development of this game. After the rocky development of Cyberpunk 2077, CD Projekt Red became infamous for crunch culture and the term became synonymous with the game, in addition to the studio as well. The long-winded development of Cyberpunk forced employees to work long hours and extra days for a long time. Responding to a question about the association between CD Projekt Red and Crunch Culture, the director said it can never happen on his watch. Furthermore, the Polish studio released a strategy update in order to reduce stress on employees and avoid burnout. Although it is important to note that CD Projekt Red isn't the only company that is associated with Crunch Culture, as it is prevalent in the gaming industry with a lot of companies promising to do better, so we will have to wait and see. According to the recent Tom Henderson's report on X-Fire, Ubisoft might be working on the next Prince of Persia project. People have been asking for another entry in the series since 2010, but all we've got was two mobile games, the first one was back in 2013 with the Shadow and the Flame remake and Escape in 2018. This might disappoint a lot of people, because the new project might be a 2.5D game, similar to the Ori franchise and dungeon crawl games like Hades. No matter what the case might be, it is still unclear whether the game is gonna be a spin-off or a mainline installment, also the release date isn't known yet, but the best we can do is hope that Ubisoft will deliver. I hope you found this video useful, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, you can also check some of our previous videos, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.